Hey everybody, welcome in that uh, new tutorial where we'll see how to convert a crowd ramp into a chop graph. So let's first uh, check my setup. Here I've been adding a uh, channel operator node in addition to a motion node. And within that uh, channel operator node, I'm uh, changing, um, influencing the X component of my wrist right side bone so that's the um, spear holding wrist and what i'm doing is adding on that uh, animation for the wrist i'm adding the content of a ramp so we've been going we've been defining that node which is called the crowd ramp so the crowd ramp is a ramp that you can control so you've got the curve control here it has some input range and uh, output range. So here within the output range, I'm saying that I want my the result of my RAM to be between minus 20 and 20. So that's going to be degrees, which will be headed to my wrist here. I can say that it is per entity random. So it means that every single entity here will pick a random value on this axis and will return a different value based on the ramp, uh, which is at that um, uh, value there. Um, I can also say it's dynamic and as soon as it's dynamic, I've got three different control nodes. So I've got either the noise noise control, so noise evolution mode. So it means that every single character will uh, start from that curve and some may go on the right, some may go on the left and that may change from one frame to another. Noise just means that we're not going to change abruptly values from one frame to another if the seed stay kind of constant. So I, I'm, I'm going to come back to this. So I'm not going to jump, you know, into various places of that curve. Um, so it means that I'll have a really continuous movement that than the one I'm having here, right? Then I've got uh, the once evolution mode. So it just means that uh, characters will start from a position, random position if this checkbox is checked or from the zero if it's not checked. And they will just play that curve once. So here it means that we'll switch from, um, let's, let's do it. We'll switch from minus 20 to 20. So all the characters will converge into reaching that 20 value. And here it's per entity random. So this is why they start at various positions. If we were unchecking this, we'll have all the characters going from minus 20 in 20. And they go um, in 240 frame, which is the duration, which is defined here. So that's the length of the curve, right? And I also have like a loop evolution mode, which just means that as soon as I play the curve once, I'm going to come back to the beginning. Great. So let's go back into um, this mode here. Per entity random is dynamic noise. And let's see how we can reproduce this with a chop graph. So why, why would you do that? Because um, that road ramp is pretty convenient. Um, doing it through the chops will give you, you know, a better um, understanding of the chops first. And also it will probably give you more control. Uh, of that ramp. Here that ramp has some pretty great controls, but let's say you want to be influenced by something from the environment or have something specific per characters, you probably have more control through the chop graphs there. Great, so let's uh, get started. I'll go into my chop graph. I'm gonna disable the one which is using the noise ramp and I'm gonna enable this expression there. So this expression here is that uh, output there and uh, it's uh, set up the same way. So here I'm going to say that I'm going to influence the wrist uh, right side orientation X component. And now it's going to be um, my duty to connect the right nodes there. So if we want to have a noise evolution mode, probably this is where we're going to start. So I'm going to bring in operation node and I'm going to rename this noise function. And within all the operation which are available, you may notice that there's one called noise. Great. So that noise operator will take one input. The input will be the seed of the noise. So we're going to provide some value which has to change uh, through time. And as soon as it changes through time, it will change the value of the noise. So we provide a value like one, two, three, four, five. So continuous function and it will provide you a continuous noise result. So let's probably plug a counter to that uh, noise function. So we'll have like a continuous value, which will be uh, triggered. I'm going to uncheck the modulo uh, checkbox here. So my counter never stop. Um, else I will go back from one to uh, from 100 to one as soon as I reach 100. Here I want really to have something continuous. So I'm going to say I want to start from one with a step of one and plug this into the noise. And um, what I want to do is plug this noise function out into my channel operator and uh, probably check what's going on here. 
So you may notice that the spears, they're like kind of moving, but uh, it's pretty erratic. It's a uh, really low noise. So if I check that character, for example, I can see that I've got my counter, my counter goes into the noise. And um, as soon as uh, the counter moves, we can see that the, mo the noise is moving as well. Here, that range is pretty low. So that's supposed to be degrees. So I'm just adding 0 0.76 degrees to my wrist. So that's probably not, you know, big enough. So if you want to really replicate that crowd ramp node um, and where I had my uh, ramp control, I probably need to bring a ramp node, which will, this is where I'm going to provide the exact same ramp control that I've been providing into my crowd ramp. What I can do is uh, plugging the output of my nose function into my ramp and bringing this into uh, my bone. So the ramp node is just a way to remap in a nonlinear manner the value which comes in. Uh, so here I've got my noise function, which is, you know, between whatever value and whatever value. So I want to just say I want to remap it between minus 20 degrees and 20 degrees plus. So and here I can control, you know, if I want to have something nonlinear, I can control my actual remap there. And um, if I play this, I can notice that now that um, degrees which can supply is way bigger than what I had before. Here, this is my noise function, 0, um, 0, 017, and you can see it gets translated as minus 8 degree. And you can see from one frame to another, we've got some pretty high uh, changes in terms of values. We got some pretty high changes because my counter, which acts as a seed, is probably moving too fast. So if I want to reduce the frequency of um, that noise function, I can just reduce the step rather than going from one, two, three, four, five. I can probably say that I want to use like a decimal. So I'm going to say my step is 0 0.01. So it will change like uh, at a really um, lower frequency. And you can see that now the noise function also gets an, a lower frequency and you can get a uh, sense that the characters are moving uh, slower. So here is just a, a, a taste of flavor, matter of flavor of uh, how uh, fast you'd like that articulation to move. Oh, you probably notice now that all my characters, they have the same orientation, the same moment for the wrists. That's because all the characters get assigned with the same noise function because the seed which gets provided for every single character is the same. So you can see here that character there um, has a value of 523. And that guy get a value of 523. So the noise function always return the same value. So what can we do about this? So we got multiple ways to actually handle this. Um, I can probably say that, um, you know, my start uh, value here um, is not one for everybody. It could be like a, a different value for everybody. And we can start from that. So that will be one way. Um, or I can just have a way to input some um, random uh, noise or maybe not random but per entity different node and maybe like uh, add it to my counter to generate a new seed so my noise function will be different but let's just say that we want to change that start one frame here for every single character if we want to do this so once again um, this is going to be my counter noise function uh, that's going to be my ramp remap let's keep everything tidy and uh, let's see um, how we can influence that start function. So first thing is if I get uh, if I get an input here and uh, you know connect it to um, to that uh, counter node, you'll notice that the start um, attribute is not available anymore. That's because it gets controlled by uh, what's get connected before. So here I can check for you know like a unique um, value per character. So like the entity index will be a good way to have a unique value per character. So every single character, for example, will get assigned with its own unique index. So for example, this character is going to be 16, and 16 will be added uh, to the step, and it will go into the noise function, and that will get returned, and we'll have a different value. That guy here, for example, will get a different value. And now we get all the characters doing different stuff with some random some random value. Well, it's not really a random value here, right? It's really like an index being applied. It's really like a per character different value. Um, so that's one way of doing it. If we really want to have random or something more complicated, uh, probably let's jump into something else. I can also bring like an operator. And we actually have a way to generate random numbers. 
so we got like a random operator node here so let's call this like the rand function rand function great let's connect this to my counter first value and um, let's say here rather than using the index so the rand function will take two inputs uh, which will be the minimum bound and maximum bound of my rand function so if i plug zero and one i'll get a floating value which will be between zero and one makes sense right so i'm gonna say it's a double um, that double is going to be called zero constant and let's plug this as the minimum bound let's create um, my double value here set it up to one let's call this one constant right and there we go so let's see the results so now we'll get a um, random value which gets added to my counter and I've got some different values per characters but you'll also notice that um, the more I'm moving into time here my, my rand function is changing at every frame so if I want to have like a rand function which is not changing at any frame I probably need to put it into a buffer so every time you call that rand function it will be you know assigned to her characters so, um, uh, and it will have a different value. So that's probably not what we want to do. So let's say we want to add a buffer. I can just use uh, finally an accumulator node. So that's gonna be um, keep first rand value. Okay, let's plug this in, let's plug this out. And what we're just gonna say is that the accumulator side, size is gonna be one only. Uh, I just want to keep one value, which will be the first value being returned by the rent function and i'm going to uncheck the first in first out which just means that as soon as the accumulator um, is uh, full with all the values so here just one uh, the new ones uh, will not um, erase the previous ones the previous one will stay so let's see what we get so let's first check if it's working properly we've got a noise function which is changing all the time great but only one value is kept, which is the first one. So that's great, all good. Let's see if that value is different for each character. So here we've got another rent value, here another one, here another one, that's great. Which means the counter for every single character will start at a different moment. So all good. And then it gets remapped. And now we've got something which is changing per frame. And all the characters have that noise function being applied. So yeah, we're all good. Let's say we don't want to have, um, you know, that dynamic uh, move here and we don't want to change the node. We can just say that the step is going to be zero. So now the character gets assigned with the same, um, well, all the characters gets assigned with uh, a rent value. The counter doesn't change. So that noise function doesn't change and all the characters get assigned with a different orientation, which is going to be influenced. So we've been reproducing with just a couple of nodes that exact same stuff than the, what is doing the crowd ramp, but with much more flexibility. If you want to be able to control exactly what's going on, if you want to dynamically change the frequency of my, your counter, this is something that you can do as well. Well, much more control on what's going on here. So I hope that helps and see you into the next video.